Hey guys, welcome back to HRG TV where we do dumb stuff and talk about dumb stuff. And today we're going to actually undo some dumb stuff, which was me destroying the front bumper on my Bronco Sport, as you'll see in this clip right here. Why did I do that? Well, you know, I don't know. I do dumb stuff sometimes, hence the, the theme here, doing dumb stuff and talking about dumb stuff. But that day I decided to go off-roading at URE and I went literally on the most challenging trail in the entire place by myself without a spotter, which is why I damaged the bumpers. I didn't have a spotter. And on a weekday, which means there's hardly anybody there. So if I had gotten broke down or stuck, there wouldn't have been anybody to save me. I would have had to walk out, which is many miles of walking up through the terrain to get out of the trails. So that was a foolish decision, but you know, in, in the end, it ended up being a great story. So that's, that's the way I look at it. It was fun, stupid. Yeah. But you know, we learned some things. And uh, what we're going to do here is take off the front bumper and see how much damage there is behind it. Hopefully there isn't any. Well, we'll see because I actually hit pretty hard, as you saw in that clip. So we're going to pull this bumper off. I got a brand new one here from Ford. I ordered it the other day. It didn't take that long to come in. It was only $450, so it's not too, too expensive. But we're going to get into this now and uh, pull this old front bumper off. So here we go. All right, guys, so I'm getting ready to start working on the Bronco. And uh, while I film this video, I have to unplug this headlight because it is so noisy that it comes across on the camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Man, that's loud. The other side doesn't do that. If you go in the Bronco sport groups and say that the headlights make noise, they say it's normal. But in my opinion, that is not normal. So I think I'm gonna bring it in next week and have them take a look at that. It's been doing it since I bought it, but it hasn't been that big of a deal, so I haven't really bothered with getting it fixed, but I think I'm gonna take it in because that's it's getting pretty annoying. I've never taken so, the bumper off of a Bronco Sport before, but one thing I can tell you from experience is that if you look at the part that is gonna be installed, you can figure out where all the mounting points are, and therefore you know where to look for all the hardware, for all the mounting points so that you don't break anything when you take the old piece off. So what we're gonna do is investigate a little bit here with the new bumper, just to see kind of where all of the mounting spots are. And that way we can easily figure out what needs to come apart and what doesn't need to come apart. Okay, there we go. So now we've got our bumper. <coughs> Got our bumper sort of unwrapped. We can see what's gonna go where and what is included and what is not. Okay, so I see a little thing right there that's not included. Okay, so we know what we gotta do. Oh man, this shit's damaged. Unbelievable. All right, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is take off these clips right here. I just have like a little panel tool I got from Harbor Freight and just get in behind the edge of the little cap there, work the tool underneath like so, pull it ever so gently, and then the whole thing will just come right out just like that. All right, now that you've got those out, there's one little screw right here. Take that out like that and then that frees up the fender liner so you can get in all right, once you have the fender liner loose, you can pull it back and there is a screw hidden way up in here that I'm gonna try to point to. This screw right here. This screw basically holds on this little piece here and this has to come off because it's attached to this. All right, next you've got two bolts behind the headlight right there and right there. And just so you can see where they are, They're down in there behind the uh, headlight. So two easy to get to or relatively easy to get to bolts right there. All right, now that you've folded that fender liner out of the way, grab a pair of needle nose pliers and pinch these little white connectors to release them. There's three of them, one in the front and then two more behind that that will release that plastic fender trim. All right, now that you've got those two main bolts out of there, the one little screw that was back inside here out, and this unclipped, 
if you're not used to doing this kind of thing, it's probably gonna make you very nervous to do what I'm about to do, but these are all clipped in with plastic clips. So when you pull on this, it's gonna make a little bit of a noise like it's breaking, but trust me, it's not gonna break. It's plastic, it's meant to be taken apart. So don't worry too much, but just, you're gonna pull like that. Now see this little clip came loose? A little bit scary, right? But it's okay, don't worry. And you wanna pull here and undo the clips from this headlight bezel and work your way across. All right, once you have it to this point, you're gonna not do what I did and just pull too hard. It actually came loose all at once and it kind of pulled a little further than I wanted. But at this point, you're gonna have to deal with the wiring harness. And basically that means that is just this little plug right here that goes to all the lights. So this is really easy to disconnect. You just press in on this little release clip right here and just pull. There's your wiring out of the way. And we're gonna move on to getting the rest of this off. But one last thing I should have mentioned, this is the washer fluid tube for the front camera. And we have to unclip this from the bumper, which just, all it is is these little clips right here. You just pull and it'll come loose. As you pull the bumper off, you're gonna wanna undo those. When we put the new bumper on, we'll clip it back in. Ford, in their infinite wisdom, decided to attach this to this with some screws that you can't access because they're behind this, facing the wrong way. The screws are facing this way. So it looks like we have to pull the entire grill to get to just those two lousy screws, which is the only thing holding this bumper on right now. So we're gonna backpedal a little bit and now take this front grill off. Now there's a screw for the front grill. There's one back underneath here and you can access it right underneath this little edge right here. So if you just get your, your screwdriver down in there, you can take this screw off and then you've got a few screws back here. All right, after all that, you can't access a screw from up there. You can't access it from behind because there's literally a radiator in the way. So I'm gonna try getting in here with my ratchet and just try to get my fingers on that screw and try to take it out this way. Ooh, yeah, it's moving, look at that. There you go. I think this would be a lot easier than trying to take everything else apart. All right guys, I'm, I'm kind of almost all the way through this, but I'm gonna suggest taking these screws out first. All right, now that we've got all these clips loose, this grill is actually clipped into this part of the bumper behind that. Then you're gonna basically push in underneath. You see how this has come unclipped now? There's clips on this that go inside and you have to get those loose by pushing it on, pushing on this part of the bumper. All right, now that we've got all the bolts loose and the bumper is free, we're going to take the wiring harness loose and basically you just have to start unclipping all of the harnesses from the lights and then unclip the harness from the plastic and then just work your way over to the other side. All right, now that we got the bumper off, I figured it'd be a good time to just check out what's behind it. And it looks like we got these little uh, shutter things that cover up the intercooler. Really, for, from a performance standpoint, there is no advantage to blocking the air to your intercooler. But let's take a look at the carnage while we're under here. This is from where I hit that rock, as you saw in that video earlier. And it looks like we got some damage here and a little bit of bent metal right there. But overall, the skid plate held up pretty well. I'm impressed. It is kind of caked up with mud, but that's to be expected when you go mud bogging. And um, I'm probably gonna clean some of this stuff out while I'm in here and uh, go ahead and uh, get that done. Probably straighten this out a little bit and then move on to reinstalling the new bumper. All right, we got the new bumper setting out here, the old bumper right here. And the next step is gonna be to remove these fog lights and these side marker lights and install them in the new piece over here. So just a couple of screws right here, real quick and easy, grab those out of there. All right, got those out. Now the side marker is gonna be a little bit more complicated. These clips are really strong and you're gonna have to use a pair of pliers to release them. I don't think you could use your fingers to get them. So I just got a pair of regular pliers here and just squeeze those clips and they push through and then it just comes right out. No problem. All right, now we're gonna put the old light into the new bumper. It just clips in. Wait for it. Such a beautiful thing. All right, now that we've got the lights clipped in, we're pretty much ready to put the bumper back on, right? 
new. Ford, in its infinite wisdom, decided that they needed to rivet this piece to this piece, as you can see right here. So we have to drill this rivet out and then put a new one in when we transfer it over to the new plastic. Why? I mean, how hard would it have been to just put a screw there? I don't understand it. But now that means when you do this job, you have to have a rivet tool. So luckily I have one. All right, now that we got the rivets drilled out, we gotta just go across and unclip this piece from this piece just by pulling on it and working your way down. Mm, have to use two hands. Um, you're gonna pull on this with one hand and then release the clip with your other hand just by pulling up like that and then it will come, it will come out like that. There you go. So you just wanna work your way down all the way across. All right, now I just gotta clip these two pieces back together in the new bumper. Just want to press in until you hear it click. And then again, just work your way all the way down so that it all clips into place. Easier said than done, obviously, but you just squeeze, pull it as you go. It should just go right into place. Squeeze it into position like that. Yeah, look at that. Okay, one last piece we have to remove from the old bumper is this fog light garnish right here. And it just unclips similar to this painted piece. So basically just go in from the back side of it and, and it'll just come right out, no problem. All right, finally got this fog light bezel out. And uh, for those of you who think you can just pull it out from the front, it's not happening. Um, the amount of and the sheer tensile strength of the clips that Ford uses to hold this little flimsy piece of plastic in is way over the top. Uh, if you tried to pull this off, you would just break it into little pieces. So you have to release the clips from the backside. It is a really big pain in the ass to get this off, but it should clip right back in fairly easily. So we'll go ahead and get that done and uh, move on to the next thing. All right, got the new bumper all assembled, ready to put on it. Now, I'm gonna remind you of something sort of obvious. This is basically just bare plastic. And once it's scratched, that's it. You can't go back in and buff it out. So I put the padding that the bumper came in down so that it won't get scratched up when I lay it down to put the wiring in and stuff like that. Just protect it a little bit. All right, reinstalling the new bumper. And our first challenge is gonna be getting the grill clips to pop back into the bumper because as you know, they overlap and the grill actually sits in front of the plastic on the bumper. So we kind of had to wiggle it out and it looks like that's kind of what we're gonna have to do to get it back in. I've been at this for a few minutes already and I've already worked up a sweat trying to get it to go in. That's what she said. Uh, but I'm gonna work at this a little longer and see if I can't get an easy way to get it to clip together. So unfortunately the camera went dead while I was trying to film the last part where I clipped the bumper back into place. It wasn't easy, but I was able to do it just with my hands and clipping it all back into place. So the last part of this installation is going to be putting in the rivet, which you'll see here, I'm using a janky rivet tool from 1982. So just do that for both sides and then double check everything. Just go around the bumper and make sure there's no loose screws and make sure everything is clipped in place. And that is pretty much it for that part of it. All right, once that's done, you wanna just click this back into place. Ever so gently, of course. And that's it. You want a couple more little clips right there. And then make sure this is clipped in on both sides. And that's pretty much it, you're good to go. All right guys, that's pretty much it for this video. And I appreciate you guys watching to the end as always. And if you're interested in the lift kit that we have on this Bronco Sport here, go check us out at hrgengineering.com. I will put a link in the description below for the lift kit. And if you have any other questions about anything, feel free to contact us through the website or if you wanna leave us a comment, that would be great. And again, I really appreciate you guys watching at the end and I will see you in the next video.